Let's take a look at the seesaw molecular geometry, also called molecular shape. So for the seesaw molecular geometry, we have a steric number of five. That means we have five things attached to the central atom here. So we have one, two, three, four, four atoms, and then the one lone pair. So if we have five things attached, one of them's a lone pair, that's going to give us this seesaw molecular geometry. A good example of this is SF4. So here's SF4, and we can see we have the four atoms, one, two, three, four, and then we see that lone pair right there. So five things, and one of the things is a lone pair. Let's look at this in three dimensions. So here's the sulfur. The purple will represent the sulfur. Let's add those four fluorine atoms. One, two, three. They are spreading out, and four. So we end up with this shape here, but we've got to put that lone pair on. That occupies space. That'll push everything down. And there it is. This is our seesaw molecular geometry. So there are three different bond angles here. First of all, the straight line across, that would be 180. Then we have the 90 degree bond angles here between these atoms. But if we look at it kind of head on, we can see that we have this 120 degree here between these two fluorine atoms. So three different bond angles, kind of a little bit of work there. Let's go back. So we have five things attached. Four of them are atoms and one lone pair. That's the seesaw molecular geometry. If you're using the AXE notation to figure out the molecular geometry, A, that's the central atom. X, those are the atoms that are bonded to that central atom. And then E, that's the lone pair. So we have A, and then for X, we have one, two, three, four. And then for E, we just have one. We don't usually write the one. AX4E, if you look that up, seesaw molecular geometry. This is Dr. B with the seesaw molecular shape. Thanks for watching.